My name is Stormy Nicole Wellington. I am an author, I am a wealth coach, and I am a child of God. I want to tell the story behind my brand, and I haven't. And I know I need to, because everybody is, it's kind of like, I don't know if I told you this, but I did a reality show called The Amateur Madness Club. And it showed the end, it showed the cars. Like now, you see my life, my cars, you see my lifestyle, but I have not taken the time to help people to understand how. And it's really have, it really have been bothering me because I know people are inspired and they're even intrigued and they want it too. Everybody wants love, peace, happiness, joy, money, and good health and good relationships. Everybody wants that. And I pretty much have it. And I have never taken the time to show people how. And it's been bothering me. And so I'm happy that we're doing this, for real. I'm happy because I know that now if you want it and you implement the stuff that, I'm, that we're talking about, even the nine laws of success, I know for a fact that if a person does those things that we're gonna teach them to do, that they can have whatever they want and still not lose themselves. I, had, I lost myself for a long time because I, I didn't wanna be um, judged. And um, I'm, I'm very different. Like I told you, hey, I hope you're ready. We're gonna listen to gospel music. We're gonna listen to rap music. We're gonna listen to trap music. We're gonna listen to jazz. We're gonna listen to all kinds of stuff today because that's really who I am. But at the end of the day, I love people. I love people so much that I really wish that people would get over worrying about my jewelry and my body and my booty and my cars. Get past that and know that that's just things that God gave me to get your attention. If I didn't look a certain kind of way, if I didn't drive a certain kind of way, if I didn't act a certain kind of way, nobody would want to hear what I have to say. So it, 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 it's, a, it's a bittersweet moment for me. And it's bitter because this is long overdue. It's sweet because it's going to change the world. And I'm happy about it. My earlier years, again, I have to start at about 13. Um, I had my first child when I was actually 15 years old. But I remember always being like abandoned. Um, and it wasn't intentionally. My mom was, was a hustler, so she always had to go. And so I remember being in foster care. I remember being uh, separated from my brother and my sister. And so I had a real tough life, kind of being alone a lot and always having to figure things out on my own a lot. And so when I find myself in a place where um, I'm pregnant at, at 14 years old, now I have to figure out how to be a mom. Um, and then I had to figure out how to be a mom and go to school. And it led me to actually having to drop out of school in the ninth grade because I didn't have time for school. I had to be a mother. Um, and then when I think about just, just my younger years, it, it also makes me think about my second child. I had my second child when I was 18. I used to be a stripper. I used to dance in the clubs. Um, and, and a lot of people ask me, why do you always talk about that? Because that's a part of who I was. And a part of who I was is what makes me who I am today. And so just going through the trials and tribulations of being a mom, of trying to figure out who I really am, um, and being abandoned and, and trying to you know decompartmentalize just all these different facets of being a mom, not being educated, uh, feeling abandoned, not feeling worthy. Um, a lot of times when you're in certain environments, it, it makes you feel less than. And so my younger years uh, were very challenging for me, but I must say that it was something on the inside of me that always knew that greatness was in store. And so my younger years helped me to develop the person that you see today. The type of dedication that it, that it takes to get to where I am is extremely difficult um, because you're doing something that the world deems that's impossible. So I don't have a person to really look up to. I mean, there's no woman that I know doing what I'm doing. So versus someone being an entertainer or athlete to get to watch the tape of LeBron James or of Dwayne Wade and say, I want to aspire to be like them or I want to aspire to be like Michael Jordan or there's no one doing what I'm doing. So I have to be dedicated to the vision and the goals that I put before me because there's no one to be that real example for me. Um, so I have to be dedicated to growth because I have to continue to grow. People depend on me to be like their teacher. Um, so I have to be de dedicated to my growth, uh, mental growth. I gotta be dedicated to my physical growth. I love cookies and cake and I love, ch chicken is one of my favorite foods. And I have not eaten chicken. I haven't had chicken in two years. I love chicken. So I have to, it's like a way of me challenging myself and proving to myself that I'm dedicated to my health journey. Um, me, my mom had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, uh, diabetes. Uh, my mom had a pacemaker. And so I have to be dedicated to working out. Um, I just gotta be dedicated, dedication in every area of my life in order to, to, to stay afloat and to stay above. Cause easily you can get comfortable. So I have to stay, it's like a continued dedication to growth and you can never get comfortable. 
13 years old, being in a strip club at 13. And my water was off at home, and my mom was not around. And at 13 years old, I, I just, at 13, I knew that she was doing what she had to do for us. We had no water at home, no food. And I'm in a strip club. And I remember this guy saying, lift up your skirt, I'll give you $600. And I, it was such a humiliating experience. I remember saying to myself, like, first of all, what are you doing here? You're 13 years old. But I also saying, you need to be here because you need those $600. And, but it was so humiliating. But I, I, I did it, and I went home and I, I paid the water bill, and I bought food. But I remember feeling like, like dirty and nasty, and feeling like, because all the people around me at the time were messing with all kind of men. I, I was still a virgin at the time. Um, but I remember being around all of these girls that were dancers. They were 14, 15, they all had fake IDs. And I was thinking to myself that this is who I'm gonna be too. And so when I look back at my 13-year-old self, I would say it had to happen. I had to experience that because it created me to be who I am today. My daughter's 18, graduating from high school in a few days. It had to happen because I, she could have been just like me. I would tell my 13-year-old self, everything that you experienced up until 13, it had to happen. You had to be abused, you had to be molested, you had to be abandoned, you had to be disappointed. Because if you didn't go through that, you wouldn't be where you are today. So it had to happen, and I'm grateful for it all because it helped to build my character and helped me to understand that it had to happen. What do I remember about some of my earlier goals? I remember them being goals that I didn't think I could really hit. I remember my goals being goals that I had to speak to myself about. I had to create affirmations to uh, convict myself to believe that it's possible. Um, I remember setting goals that people would laugh at me about and they'll be like, that's not gonna happen. Um, like, you crazy, like, who does that, you know? Um, and I remember sometimes not even believing that I could hit my goals. And I remember sometimes, you know, putting goals out there because I have a way of putting things out there because I want to be accountable some way, somehow. And once I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. But I remember not even believing that I could do them. But as I spoke and I, and I prayed and I continued to convict myself and read books and listen to audios and change my environment. And when I started to love myself and believe that I deserve certain things is when they start, started to happen. So my earlier goals wasn't believable in the beginning. I didn't even believe them. I just put them out there and, and said, I'm gonna try it. Ooh, what it's like to be the leader in my industry is extremely challenging. It's extremely challenging because my industry has um, a stigma. It's, it's, it's a, um, a perception that they think you're supposed to have. You're supposed to dress a certain kind of way in my industry. Uh, you're supposed to talk a certain kind of way in my industry. You're supposed to be a certain kind of way in my industry. And I have to lead thousands of personalities so I have to learn how to become all things. One of my favorite scriptures, I think is in Corinthians, um, Paul became all things to all men so that he could win a few. So me having to deal with multiple personalities from multiple backgrounds, I have to learn how to become a Latina when I'm from the United States. I have to learn how to become African when I'm dealing with my African people. So it, it takes a lot. It, it, it takes a lot and because I'm such a free spirited person, I have to try to find ways to kind of tamper who I am or taper who I am because I could be a little bit too much for people. But I realize that I'm called to a certain group of people that could see themselves in me. So I have to say, okay, Stormy, do you please the people or do you do what you gotta do to please the people to attract who you're called to? So it's very challenging, but I think because I'm free within me, I'm able to be what I need to be for who I need to be it for. What gets me up in the morning? You know what, it's kind of weird. I feel responsible for a lot of people. I feel that, who am I about to cry? I feel like I'm the voice of the minority. I'm the voice of that little black girl. I'm the voice of that black guy. I'm the voice of that Spanish person that was told they couldn't be nothing. And if I don't get up and be the example, who is gonna be? I don't know anyone that has my journey or anywhere close to my story. 
And so if I don't keep going, I, I believe that you can either be, people, either be people's example or you can be somebody's excuse. So I like to be the example. And so I'm inspired by knowing that my life, I get to live out loud so the world can see and I get to inspire somebody that if I can do it, that you can do it too. I feel like my purpose in life is to be the example. Um, I'm not racist, I love white people, I love Asian people, I love everybody. But I believe that I am the voice of the black woman and the black man um, in terms of who is gonna be the example. The, the best we have, for my knowledge, is people like Oprah Winfrey and T.D. Jakes and you know Eric Thomas, and of course you got some athletes, but who is that normal person that, that didn't go to high school, that, that was on welfare, that was depressed, that did drugs, sold drugs, um, that scammed, and that can say, this is what I used to be. This is what I was, this is what I saw. But you take that word saw and put it back on, that's what I was, but it's not who I am. So I believe my purpose is to continue to show people that we, we, we serve an abundant God, that, we, that wealth is our, is our birthright, happiness is our birthright, love, success, joy, peace, and contribution is our birthright. And so I wanna be that, that, that person that you think about when you think that, man, I can't do it. No, yes, you can. My favorite saying that inspires me or motivates me. You know what, I have a lot of them. Um, I'm an affirmations type of girl, and so whatever I want, I create an affirmation for it. But currently today, I am in a constant state of attracting all the good that I deserve and I desire. And so I'm calling for, what it, I don't know what it is. I know that it's good out there, and I know that if I believe that I, I deserve it and I ask for it, then God is gonna make sure that the universe aligns to give it to me. So as of right now today, I clap my hands and say I'm in a constant state of attracting all the good that I deserve and I desire. So whenever something comes to me, I'm saying, okay, this is good, but where does it go? Because I believe that that's what I'm attracting right now today. Affirmations are very important. Um, it's sad because, and, and I have to talk from, from my perspective, black people don't really understand affirmations. Most of them don't know about them. Nobody taught us about affirmations. Nobody told us that like the, the world was created with words. God said, let there be light and there was light. That was a word. Everything started with the word. We will be nothing without a word. And so a lot of times we are such in a place of fear, we're such in a place of doubt that if you don't believe that you can do something, you won't do it. And so affirmations changed my life. Um, I, I used to hear about them, I used to think it was stupid. Affirmations, like what is that? That sounds like hocus pocus, you know? And so when I started to speak things, and at first when I was speaking, I wouldn't believe them because I used to think this is stupid. But I would find myself speaking something and then it, start, it started to happen. And then I find myself speaking something and then I would really believe it. So I would go from saying I'm healthy, I'm happy, I'm humble, I'm wealthy, I'm strong, when I wasn't those things. And then finally I started to become those things. And so I discovered affirmations maybe about 10 years ago. And ever since I started to speak things that I, I, I wanted, then they started to come. As a matter of fact, right now today, I just realized that everything that I've been speaking, I have it. Why aren't you happily in love, Stormy? Do you realize that I have never spoke about, none of my affirmations include being loved. So now that I'm adding it to my affirmations, it's so weird. People, I can feel love from people more, and I have people saying, I love you. And I could tell that I'm not giving them anything, I'm not paying them anything. And ever since I started speaking, that I'm in a constant state of attracting all the good that I deserve and I desire, and I know I deserve love, is coming. So affirmations, I believe, is what created me outside of prayer and hard work and belief. Affirmations convicted my belief. What makes me happy and what brings me joy and what makes me excited? Well, there's so many answers to that. Number one, you know, I, I don't love money, but I, I think money is a measuring stick. I think if you're doing a good job at what you do, you're gonna get paid for it. So I get excited when I see my bank account grow. Um, I get excited when I see the people that I'm coaching and working with, when I see their evolution, when I see that they're walking different, they're talking different, their energy is different, their money is increased, they're able to take care of their family. That, that, that gets me off. Like I, that's like a drug. I'm addicted to knowing that you cannot tell your story and leave my name out. I love when people say, oh, well, I did this and I did that and then Stormy Wellington came. So that right there, I must say, knowing that I contributed to you becoming, because we're all human becomings, not beings, I get probably more excited than even my own money when I see somebody else winning. And I love when I'm sitting back in an audience or I'm at an event and you walk across the stage and you say, and I want to thank Stormy Wellington. 
it just does something to me. That is my high. One piece of advice that I will have to give to someone that has the ambition, go for it. It's a feeling that you got in your gut. It's a feeling that you have that for some reason, as I said earlier, we tend to suppress this gut feeling that we can do better uh, because of our environment, because of what we used to be, or who we used to, what we used to do. And so because we keep having that self-chatter with ourselves, we, we tend to say, nah, I can't do it. Nah, I'm not good enough. Nah, it's not possible. So what I'll tell to that person is that fight. Whatever you're feeling that you can do, whatever you see, because if you can see it, then you could achieve it. Just go for it. Let nothing stop you and become the example versus the excuse. The more you go out there and you make it happen, the more people will say, man, if, if he could do it, I could do it too. Man, if she could do it, man, I know I could do it too. So be the example. Go for it. I don't have nobody to look up to. There's nobody that I could remotely say that's even close to having some of my life experiences. And there's a lot of people out there who come from an environment of, like my mom and, my mom and dad sold drugs. Like I watched them sell drugs my whole life. And then my, my, I have two dads. I have one dad that lives with me. He's, he's with my brother right now for the weekend. And then I have my dad, my biological dad. So I was able to watch my, my hustling mom and dad and my working dad. My dad that worked, I didn't like his life. I was impressed with him being married and him having that life that everybody, you know, thought that you should live. But he was always at work. He didn't seem to have any freedom. But then my mom and my dad, they sold drugs, but they had freedom, they were able to travel the world. So it was one of those things where I knew that my mom selling drugs and my dad selling drugs was not right. But they did it and it seemed to be, I like this life over here, but this is not right, drugs, and you can go to jail. And my mom did go to jail a lot. And then my dad, who had this job, he didn't seem really happy, but he dealt with it. And so when I look at my life now, it's like, who has my past? that can share my same present. Most people, they don't turn out to be anything. They turn out to be losers, welfare recipients, drug addicts, alcoholics. There's a lot of girls that's in the strip club. I, I stopped dancing like 20 years ago, but it's a lot of girls that still do that. Girls I met in the club when I was there, they're still in the club right now. And so it just makes me emotional because I don't have a person to look up to. My, the most, I'm inspired right now by Oprah Winfrey. She doesn't have my past. She has some, some, some different remnants of, of pain, but we don't share any similarities. I'm inspired by Beyonce, because I love her work ethic. I love her, her work ethic. But like, who is gonna be that person that a person like me looks up to? So I feel like it's very necessary and timely for my voice to be heard, because we need a me. And I know that. Like, it's funny because I'm amazed at me. I still amaze myself. Like, I'm not, I don't do things and be like, oh yeah, you know, you're supposed to do that. No, I have discovered and, and created an amazing ability to self-correct myself. Like, it's, it's crazy how I can do wrong and then be like, girl, you know, you need to stop that. And just like that, it's, it's done. So to be able to have that ability and to be not afraid to live it and to tell it, it's, it's, it inspires me. It makes me emotional because I'd be like, why? Why you talk so much? Shut up, lay down, go. And then the thing that everybody wants to do, I don't do with everybody. Everybody wants to hang out, go to clubs. And like the other day I put on this dress, my 18 year old daughter has a boutique, right? And I put on this dress and it was kind of see-through. I was going to a boat party. And I'm like, where am I going with this? And my daughter was like, Ma, you look good. You look fine, you look sexy, you look nice. Girl, switch it up on them. And I'm like, you know what, yes. And I did it and I got such a huge response. And I think it's because people like me don't look like me. Inspiring, loving, giving, wealthy people. I mean, I paid over $620,000 in payroll last year. I'm, I have a ninth grade education. I paid 420,000 in taxes last year. I'm not supposed to do that. You're supposed to be on welfare. You used, you used to be on Section 8 in real life, girl. So when I put on that dress and it was kind of see-through, I'm like, yeah, let them know that I don't care where you come from. It's still in me. I'm still that girl that if I don't taper it, I could do that every day. I could be out popping bottles, hanging out, driving my Rolls Royce all day long. And, but I learned, do it, do it one day for the year and come back home and do what you do. So I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm a proud black woman, proud of myself. And I'm even proud of what I'm seeing happen in my culture. A lot of people in my culture are starting to come up and it feels good and I think that I have something, I just believe I got something to do with it. They watching me, they, they, they not saying anything, 
but you see my page, you inspired by me, and that makes me feel good. Whether it's true or not, I believe it, and that's what matters. Whatever you believe is right. I want to be remembered as a fighter. And FIGHT is the acronym for me. It stands for Faith, Intentional, Gratitude, Happiness, and True Love. I want when a person sees me, they see endless possibilities. That you could be who you are, uh, perfectly imperfect. Um, you can live life. You can come from the outhouse, the penthouse, the white house, from Yale to jail, from the streets or the suites. That you can do anything that you believe that you can do and anything that, that's gonna serve God's world, if you focus on just that and being good and, and treating people good, then you can have anything that you want in life. That's how I wanna be remembered, as one of the greatest women that ever walked this earth that has made the greatest impact to the point where you talk about me at, at the dinner table, you talk about me on the way to church, you talk about me in your boardroom, you talk about me in the jailhouse, you talk about me in the church house. That's what I wanna be remembered as. A fighter and an overcomer. My name is Stormy Wellington, and this is the story behind my brand.